So, what exactly is compound security? By compound, I mean the increased interaction, interconnectedness, and collision of an otherwise once separate policy issue reflective of this new post-Cold War, post-9-11, and now post-pandemic international security environment. The security dilemma of the 20th century international environment, defined primarily by physical security threats that the military has to physically deal with, has now given way to a new 21st century security dilemma, the compound security dilemma. As an example, we now also have to deal with communication and information operation campaigns that scale with the speed of social media posts that go viral, as well as cyber warfare, hacking and theft of information by our adversaries, in addition to physical security threats. Traditional security concerns over material resources are becoming less and less divorceable from issues of human security. Matters of health and biological contagion, once easily and accurately recognized and not considered domestic security issues, today are merely part of a larger and more complicated global health security whole in a compound security dilemma world. The novel coronavirus global pandemic could not be a more accurate example. Biosecurity has given way to a global pandemic. That global pandemic has allowed countries like China to develop a COVID diplomacy, where they ironically are able to position themselves not as the starting point of the pandemic, mind you, but the benevolent distributor of supplies and resources to aid those hardest hit. The coronavirus has also caused everything from mental health crises to supply chain crises on a scale the world was not yet prepared for. Traditional security concerns over material resources are less divorceable from issues of human security, including local concerns and challenges over food shortages, water predation, geographic changes, demographic changes, health concerns, and human rights protections, to name just a few. An example, the civil war in Syria is near perfectly and tragically illustrative of the compound security dilemma that is centerpiece to this new theory of next. Beyond the classic indices of conflict, there is another contributing factor and that factor is water scarcity. We can connect water scarcity to food insecurity, social instability, and potentially violent conflict. As climate change amplifies scarcity worries, more secure water supplies could help the lives of millions in conflict zones. Drought and water shortages in Syria likely contributed to the unrest that stoked the country's 2011 civil war. Dwindling water resources and chronic mismanagement forced 1.5 million people, primarily farmers and herders, to lose their livelihoods and leave their land. Those farmers moved to urban areas and magnified Syria's general destabilization. These unstable conditions will likely deteriorate in the coming decades. The map shown projects high water stress across Syria and its neighbors in 2040. Syria is projected to be among the 11 most water-stressed countries in the world by 2040, and it's far from alone in the region. 14 of the 33 most water-stressed countries in 2040 are in the Middle East. Water stress is an underlying conflict multiplier that will not go away. We also must bear witness to the fourth war I mentioned earlier. Violence waged by state and non-state disruptors via the forced weaponized migration of peoples, with natural and strategically intended disruptive impacts on the external physical stability and security of NATO's southern flank, as well as on the internal stability, security, and legitimacy of EU member countries. Biosecurity and insecurity is also important. The rising threats of natural and man-made biological threats to include pandemic flu, HIV AIDS, and other novel threats that we don't even understand and can consider at this time, also make public health and health policy a global security policy issue. Public health was traditionally an issue relegated to domestic concerns in jurisdictions, but now 
old concepts of domestic politics and policies take on a global context. We now must think of all these policy issues and concerns in a security context. What we have come to call gray zone conflicts are manifestations of the compound security dilemma, but also vice versa. That the compound security dilemma is, at least in part, an artifact of limitations in how we as a nation view and understand and approach the following. One, what constitutes, as well as does not, an issue or situation of security versus non-security? this being an ideational blinder. Two, how we are institutionally structured for planning, decision-making, and implementation speaks to a possible organizational flaw. And lastly, how we view and value, weight and prioritize an issue or a situation. In the face of compound threats in the new compound security dilemma, these three factors have limited and restricted the solving power of our traditional policy and strategy planning, decision making, and operations. The challenge and the imperative of achieving real, practicable, and doable whole of government planning solutions is not limited to one simple problem. This is a multi-dimensional, multi-functional, and multi-echelon temporal puzzle. All three combined impact and even help determine behavior. Now, any good, useful theory of next should have easily recognizable governing dynamics. A number of core dynamics govern this compound security dilemma. First, shocks in one traditionally distinct public policy sector, such as economics, have cascading effects on other sectors also related to human security. For example, with little or no warning, a matter of oil supply and demand can turn into a regional and worldwide security concern, even turning into predatory conflict. Concepts of domestic politics and policies such as energy policy and migration policy now take on a global context. We must now think of these policy issues and concerns in a security context. The new compound security dilemma questions the foundational logic of the traditional security dilemma while also calling for an entirely new governing logic. It raises central questions of scale and legitimacy of preferred unilateral policy approaches over multilateral options. Another governing dynamic of the compound security dilemma is the tragedy of scales problem. In the past, policy treatment approaches to planning, decision making, and implementation were designed and op optimized towards efficiency metrics calibrated around response, mitigate, recovery, public policy standard operating procedures and processes. The contagion qualities of compound security threats, however, outgrow and outpace traditional policy prescriptions given their exponential growth characteristics. Another additional feature of the compound security dilemma is the interaction effect at play between simultaneous and overlapping sources of instability. The manifestations of these threats derive their character from this interaction between variables. The effect is, at least, multiplicative, not additive in nature. This tendency of the compound security threat to outpace the capacity of policy response options is just as apt to COVID-19 pandemic as it is to the rise of ISIS, the Afghanistan war, the crises in the Middle East, the compound threat that is Venezuela, and numerous other nexes of conflict that manifest at geopolitical flashpoints. The compound security dilemma, similar to the paradox of the wicked problem, features poorly and undertime treatments to threats that do not solve or mitigate, but rather metastasize those threats at accelerative rates. This heightens the risk of miscalculation, missignaling, and runaway crisis escalation. Further, the actions of our adversaries generate and exploit compound security threats deliberately and strategically along gaps and seams of traditionally geographic combat command boundaries. The geography of compound threats is an essential calculus in strategic planning, 
force planning, and risk management and mitigation. In this new fourth age, geography has returned with a vengeance as a governing dynamic of international relations. In addition, positional advantage is once again a determinative factor of this new compound security world order. So then consequently, there is yet another redefining driver of change in the character of the global environment of competition. Compounding and convergence dynamics and the unique role of geography and compounding impacts of physical terrain in human terrain. Once again, we will see a powder keg of geostrategic places and spaces triggering great power wars. Looking at the actual trajectory and directions of these threat trends, we see a convergence of these compound challenges towards very certain specific key geographic locations. Locations that just so happen to reside at major seams, political, cultural, ethno-sectarian, policy sector, and the like, offering both challenges as well as possible benefits and opportunities. Interestingly, at or near key states at the nexes of our present day boundaries dividing local, state, national, and international governance jurisdictions, and in the martial context, the current geographic combatant command UCP boundaries. It is here where it seems some big opportunities lie and can be taken advantage of, allowing us to focus our geopolitical and geoeconomic efforts and investments at or near these threat nexes and in creative collective defense and security ways. These threat nexes are places where this convergence of compound threats presents the United States with additional challenges for certain, but also with opportunities to sharpen our focus and apply our resources in more precise and economical ways at decisive geographic locations through simultaneously executed named operations in several enduring efforts, creating possibility for the achievement of overmatching compound wins. The newly found emphasis and awareness of issues of relating to geostrategy is in fact a welcome development across the United States defense intellectual and strategic planning community, as evidenced by the logic of the 2018 National Defense Strategy. But an embrace of the study and application of geostrategic studies is not only important for future leaders of the soft community to inform United States government and joint approaches to strategy. Geostrategy is an essential element to the two plus three threats plague book and more pointedly to China's expansion globally as they seek to couple targeted control and access to key geostrategic locations in order to outmaneuver and hold at risk U.S. interests regionally and globally. U.S. adversaries are now pursuing positional advantage through their strategies and actions globally. As we know, Russia, China, and Iran are deliberate in the what as well as in the where of their activities. It is at the where which makes issues of geostrategy all the more relevant to the future utility of SOF. Amplifying around 2014, Russian activities in the Crimea, Cyprus, Greece, Egypt, as well as Syria, have been all about holding the Eastern Mediterranean sea lanes of communication at risk. China efforts in Latin America are all about gaining influence to place the Panama Canal and other strategic locations in a series of overlapping influence levers to salami slice to a new normal of either control or positional denial of U.S. access, basing, and overflight. Again, this is all about gaining positional advantage. Chinese strategists think and write using geopolitical terms, dividing the world up into regions or zones. They deploy concepts like heartland and rimland in their works and frequently direct referrals to the great geostrategic theorists like Sir Halford Mackinder and Alfred Thayer Mahan, as well as others. We need our soft leaders to think this way as well. Another thing that a geostrategic and positional advantage approach by the threat does for a competitor or an adversary is that it allows one to focus their resources at what the famed George Kennan called the strong points. 
For the fourth age, we will need soft to play point versus area defense at or proximate to these very strong points. It is important to note that the point of action may be far removed from the point of effects. And in that sense, soft can indirectly affect behavior and decision-making calculations through actions that may be in other tangible and non-tangible domains. This itself is the exact logic of placing CGI ADFs and CGED SODFs at the geostrategic nexes. If, as PM Barnett and others have suggested, today's global security dilemmas are most likely to arise within a so-called arc of instability, we would do well to tailor national geostrategy accordingly. And not only in terms of the classic foreign versus domestic stovepipes. If we do not, we risk adopting courses of action that exacerbate security dilemmas rather than eradicates them. So in summary, compound threats demand nothing less than compound solutions to achieve lasting and durable compound wins. However, in the continued absence of an overall overarching governing strategy, some worry, myself included, that tactical decisions and discrete sequential approaches to problems and problem solving could actually worsen this new compound security dilemma and lead to an unintended wider set of conflicts. The bigger maps, larger and longer wars, marking of a fourth age of soft.